in three, two, one. Hey, welcome back, everybody. 2021 to the Weapons of Mass Discussion podcast. Glenn Snyder here with Dr. Corbett Everidge. Ah, everything's already off to a to a big big bang start so far this yeah, year. For those of y'all <laughs> watching, if you see me just scratching my face, it's just oh god. To let you guys know, as we start this recording, um, just a few hours ago, whenever uh, the U.S. Congress was uh, going through the elect- electoral vote process. Uh, you do realize that Congress is like a group of baboons, right? Uh, That's I have lost all, I, you know, you, you uh, work for the people, but when the people come to you, you run and hide. Yeah. But so anyway, uh, you know, Trump supporters, essentially, uh, you know, people, I, I would say, they're just basically tired of being screwed with, uh, come to the Capitol and they came in the Capitol. Mm-hmm. Now, they came in, in in a large number of, of force. They weren't. They weren't showing weapons. They weren't. They, they had their flags and their fists, and they came to the front door. And I, I was. I actually turned on Fox News and was watching the on the street guy. I don't know what his name is. Uh, and he was. He was going to ask this guy a question. And that guy immediately about the violence. He said, whoa, 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 mean the, That's the people's house. We have every right to be in there. You know. And and that guy immediately cut him off and went. Oh, okay, we'll go back to you in the in the, in the newsroom. Yeah, you know. Yeah. They won't hear that. But. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to spend much time on this because it is developing, still kind of ongoing. But and you know, I don't want to butcher any facts or anything like that. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But no, my my, my thought on this is, you know, the, I'm sitting here in the, here in the the, the Congress rep, the, the politicians on the news, and they got them locked away somewhere for safekeeping, and they're on a oh, you know, this you, you can't write, you can't you can't do this, you can't do that. Where were you last summer? When it was at the front door of all the people that lost businesses mm-hmm. and homes got tore up and, and people were injured and hurt whenever the, you know, the protests were going on, that was okay because people could voice their, you know, they could voice out their opinion through, through whatever means necessary. But now it comes to your front door, to your place of employment, it's not okay no more, is it? Oh, this is it's total condemnation. So I think it's, this may be a wake-up call for some people. It won't be. Because here's the problem. That's a small group of people that showed up in Washington. There's a whole lot more of them in this country. You know, and when you push people, when you push people to a point, when you push people to a point, you know, good people are tolerant people. But at some point, good people say enough is enough. And that's what you started, I think that's what you saw today. So anyway... It's, like I say, it is kind of ongoing. I'm curious to see what happens when we, when we get done here and go check out the news and, and, and see what's going on. Um, but, you know, it, it was <laughs> it's, it's, it's chaos, <laughs> you know. But it, 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 does it surprise me? No. It's been building to this because, you know, you, you alienate so many people like it. Um, you know, again, these are just usually down-home, down-to-earth people that just want to be left alone, go about their daily lives. But when you go stepping on them and stepping on them and stepping on them, you, you know, eventually, um, you know, you keep kicking the dog, eventually he's going to bite you. You know, you had the sweetest dog in the world, but if you keep kicking him, he's going to have enough. He's going to take a chunk out of your hind end. This is going to probably be the part where you insert the... Uh, the beeps. Where, yeah, the beeps and the... Uh, <laughs> the dead silence. Gonna, yeah, there's going to be like a big air horn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. I made a prediction to you. I don't I don't even remember if I put it out here for our listeners. No. Happy New Year, by the way. Yeah, happy you know, New Year, yeah. yeah. Happy, happy. You know, yeah, happy. You know, we had this was a great big ship of hope for 2021. Well, apparently, the, the hull has been breached because we're taking on fucking water. <laughs> we're taking on water in the. Yeah, okay. Now, I, and anyway. the Kraken's creeking up from yeah, the bottom yeah, of the yeah, sea. The crack, what, what, what's happening to that hoe anyway? <laughs> Dude, I haven't. They're, they're, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah, I, she's making porn somewhere in I Venezuela. Don't, I don't know what's going but, on. But anyway, people. I made a prediction to you. Yeah been about three or four weeks ago, that sooner or later you're going to see bombings. Well, uh-huh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, uh, Christmas morning. Uh-huh, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, all this denouncing violence bullshit, you know, uh, oh, Congress, where we all, like you said. Yeah, you know, where, where we all, you know, it was mostly peaceful protesters. Well, you got to pay attention to that, mostly peaceful. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, well, the the fact that this, like over in Greensboro, that you know that fellow that just happened to be black that they torched a shoe store. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I, yeah, no, 
Mm, I, I'm, I'm going to hit the table, damn it. Well, you know, it's it's it, it's it's, ball, it's it's coming to the boiling point. You look back. Do you remember a man named Timothy McVeigh? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to make a prediction to you. Fed, Murrah Fed, Federal Building, Oklahoma. That's going to look like a firecracker. You know, they 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 going they going to find they going to piss off that one that that is not that will take it to the nth yes. degree. Yes. Yeah. You know, for those of you who've seen me and, and been to my Twitter and, and stuff, there's a man that I think is a national hero. His name is Marvin Hemeyer, the kill dozer. Okay. You familiar with him? I've heard you speak okay. of Oh, yeah. I've got all kinds of paraphernalia <laughs> on his. But here's a short synopsis of what he did. It was a property dispute, mm-hmm. and it was over a water line. Okay. He owned, a mach- he owned a welding shop, so he finally had enough of their bullshit. Okay. So he goes and buys a Komatsu de- uh, bulldozer and up-armored this thing and destroyed the entire town. <laughs> Just got up one day, so you know what? Uh, today's a good enough day. Cranked it up and destroyed the entire town. It's in Col- Colorado. Tired of people pushing him around. Uh, you know what? The man's a national hero. You know, you've got these idiots like this. Th- th- I saw that jackass Tom Cotton. Well, this is un-American. Well, uh, Mr. Cotton, let me ask you something. Uh, if it wasn't for actions like today, you wouldn't even be here. Yeah, you wouldn't have that job that you're getting, making yeah. money for and absolutely producing nothing. You know, so I guess yeah. if, if we transport ourselves back in time, Mr. Cotton and people yeah. like you, that you probably had a problem with the Boston Tea Party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess why don't you just go to you go up to Washington, D.C., Mount Vernon, a place like that. Why don't you just go call George Washington a son of a bitch and be done with it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you preach all the patriotism and, 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 and yeah, the, the country and the Constitution, but how do you think it got here? You know, yeah. and, I, and I said this, Antifa, I despise them. BLM, I understand where you're coming from. You know, yeah. but, but, but let's look at this. We may have different motivations. But you know what? And I never thought I'd live to see the day that I said this. But you know what? I'm not beginning, not so sure they ain't got a damn point. Yeah. I'm going to be doing my mind blown. Because you said it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't like right. the end you're destination right. where y'all are going at the end of this. You know, we, y'all go, y'all go where, your way, I go mine. Yeah. But you know what? Y'all ain't the problem. Antifa's not the problem. BLM's not the problem. These Trump supporters are not the problem. You know, another problem is inside that damn building up there. Yep. Politicians. Yeah. I didn't spend I didn't spend those years of my life wearing this uniform, mm-hmm. and I said this to you today. Man, you done got me got my blood pressure up. We've been here five minutes. Well, you know we. <laughs> I had to get him rolling. Yeah, I ran twenty twenty one. I ran since nineteen seventy nine. Has called us the Great Satan. Mm. I wonder why. Yeah, because there's a whole bunch of them up in, on Capitol Hill. I wonder why. It's not because of the people. No, it ain't because it ain't because of you. It ain't That's because right. of your neighbors. That's it's right. not because of the people we see in the grocery store. It's the people that are up there running the show. Yes, it is. That clown car up there we call Washington. Hey, you reap what you yeah, sow. You're yeah. reaping what you sow. You push people so far, and people will be done with it. I'm sorry. You know, we could translate this into martial arts. You know, how many times have we seen? You know, you hear the, the word bully, the bully. You know, you can only turn your back so many times on that bully for he's going to rip you a new one. Mm-hmm. How do you fix the bully? You rip him a new one. Yes. And, you know, you're going to bully people so far and they're, they're going to rip you a new one. And that's just, you know. You know, I, I'm going gonna, gonna to tell you, uh, 2021 is a new year for me. Because there's, there, you want truth, I'll give you truth. Mm-hmm. I'm standing at a mm-hmm. gas station the other day. Mm-hmm. And this uh, gentleman, I'll leave it at that. Hey, how you put this oil in your car? I'm standing there minding my business, pumping my gas. Mm-hmm. Hey, put. It, don't ask me, hey, sir, how, uh, could uh, could I ask you a question? No, it just looks to me like he's known me all my life. Right. How you put it? I said, uh, you ever poured a glass of water? <laughs> it's not you right. twist the cap and turn the bottle upside down. It's not rocket science. It's not even science. It's just basic muscle motion. <laughs> And you're going to... Yeah. Anyway. But anyway. So what we're going to do, uh, we just want to kind of you know, kick off with that because that's you know that's kind of current event thing going on now. But what I need gonna, an Alka-Seltzer, man. You probably need something stronger than Alka-Seltzer. Yeah. <laughs> they, they make those out of cocaine. I don't know. <laughs> 
I guess you could snort the Elka Seltzer and see what it is. I'm just kidding. It'd be like a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> Poof. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, we're already off track. We ain't been here I'm 10 be, minutes. I'm going to be crushing up some damn flat stones <laughs> vitamins in the snort. Yabba da boo. I'll get rid of this. Um, so it, 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 you, we, 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 oh god off the rails off the rails so what we're gonna do you know, starting out in the year you know again the, the the reason we started the youtube channel to begin with was to talk about we got know, a youtube channel yes we actually yeah, do awesome. and actually yeah, it's doing it. good we awesome. got more subscribers this week it's yeah. actually really good um we got what's youtube hmm. anyway so they uh you know, we, we started out with this thing. We really wanted to kind of push things that were related to self-protection, self-defense, that sort of thing. You know, and that branches out in a lot of different avenues. You know, we we wanted to go down each one of those streets. You know, we want to go down and see, you know, follow this path and that path and kind of see where things went and, mm-hmm. and talk about all aspects of it. You know, sometimes it seems like we're drifting off the, off the farm there a little bit, but it all struggles back. Like the all, last 10 minutes? Yeah, but, it, but well, it all struggles back. It all comes back, yeah. you know, to, uh, you know, understanding looking around you and, and and seeing what's going on around you the situation that you're in so there there in fact you, you you hear the word situational awareness which i know we hate especially you but you know it it, it is a, it's a true statement you know because you know if things that are going on around you um if you don't pay attention will bite you in the ass that's the quickest way to get yourself in a, in a bag of stuff is to not pay attention to what's going on around you. Mm-hmm. And so many in our population. And, and, and that's kind of, if you kind of look at the, the, the political state, people have been like the ostrich with their head in the sand. They've had their head in their phone, had the head in their, in their TV shows, their game shows, their games, you know, their sports, all this stuff. And they've put that above things that really matter. You know, they've just turned a blind eye to the things. They haven't, they haven't been aware of the situation that's going on around them. So, that's on a broad scale. Let's take it down to a macro level here. Talk about you know individual situational mm-hmm. awareness. So um, this was a topic he sort of brought up. So I'm, I'm not going to hijack. I just kind of want to intro a little bit, and we'll let him him get into kind of the path he wanted to take. Because he was already fired up a little bit when he came in the door. I, I saw it in his eye. And then we had a little conversation before we started taping, got him really wired up, and then got him on here. It just kept flowing. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he does this on purpose. Because <laughs> another button's to push. Yeah. But but with, with, with that said, you know, we're going to jump in again for 20, starting out 2021, you know, kind of going back to the roots of the podcast. Um, we'll jump right into to where you want to take it tonight with situational awareness. By the way, you've already got me for, for the Festivus poll this year. Oh. We did that well, a couple weeks. Yeah. And, right. and we're already 12 months ahead of schedule. Festivus. Any, anyway. <laughs> It's going to be a year of Festivus. Yeah, yeah Festivus. For, for, <laughs> like year of the Dragon? Yeah. It's the year of the Festivus. Yeah. The year of the Pangolin. <laughs> that's, that's going to be our new mascot. We are, I'm, I'm actually currently trying to find one. Uh, where we live, I think they're legal to own, but well, if anybody, <laughs> if anybody, they find a stuffed one to yeah, show exactly. on the table If here. anybody from China has one, <laughs> if you send us a stuffed pangolin, we'll give you five free T-shirts. <laughs> there you go. And I'll, I'll pay for the shipping. You know. But anyway, I don't get a live one because I don't know what them things yeah, carry. Yeah, but yeah. you know, a stuffed one might be okay. Well, I'll just take it to the health department. And be done with it. <laughs> God Almighty. But anyway, without with that said, situations. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I've kind of think that, that the situation has hijacked the importance of the environment. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've said this 100,000 times. If you're in a quote-unquote bad neighborhood and you sit there, well, why did this happen to me? Uh, uh, yeah, uh. yeah, no no kidding. You know, I mean, that'd be like, you know, you, you why, why am I getting shot at? And you look up and you wonder, well, well, well wait a minute, I'm in Beirut. Yeah, yeah no kidding. So, but a situation is basically an event or an occurrence in time right okay so now that we got that out of the way and then we got the environment it's you know in place mm-hmm. well something i've been working on recently is and i'm not really just sure how i'm gonna i'm still this is still a work in progress so y'all get y'all are in on the ground floor on this header h-e-d-e-r okay we're looking at different characteristics mm-hmm. of situational awareness that will eventually play a role in self-protection Correct. Okay. H, hotel, for those of you in the military. We're looking at human, the human body, human behavior, humanity. Now, how many times have you heard this? That if you're confronted with a dangerous situation, mm-hmm. if you're confronted by somebody who is very verbally or, 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 or you know, violent, 
mm-hmm. verbally aggressive, or vi- just run away. Hmm. Okay. The first thing that we have to understand about a, a self-protection situation or being self-aware or situationally aware is we have to understand ourself. I think somebody kind of alluded to that a few years ago, uh, Sun Tzu. Uh, mm-hmm. You're going to tell somebody to run away that has a bad knee, is obese, mm-hmm. uh, that is half blind. Hmm. Or all blind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that is in, a, in an environment that they're not aware of. They may be what happens if somebody told me to do that and I'm, I'm, in, I'm one street over away from being in Compton, California. One of the first things of self-protection instructors we have to understand and we have to, we have to put out for our clients and our students is you've got to know yourself. Mm-hmm. Is this person physically capable of doing the things that we're, we've traditionally asked them to do? Is this person mentally capable? Mm. That's a huge one. Are they emotionally capable? And I've made the contention that that's probably in a lot of violent situations, that's where people fall apart. Yeah. The emotions, the fear, mm-hmm. uh, even anger. You know, I've seen very competent fighters get the floor mop with them because they lose control, they lose control of themselves. Yeah. And honestly, that's what my instructor, that's one of the biggest things he taught us is one of the first things I want to do in a street confrontation is I want to make you angry. Because what happens? You lose, you lose your shit. You, you lose your, you lose your you objectivity. Game plan goes out the window. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you become emotionally involved in this. Yeah. You overreact. Correct. So then what happens? There's an old saying to this. He who angers you controls you. Hmm. Because if I've got the power over you to anger you, what else can I do to you? Right. So we've got all this rolled up into a package, but let's just for right now focus on the physical part of this. You've got a person, man, woman, let's just be fair about this, or gee, gee, ja, 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 or whatever your, your gender happens to be this week. Uh, hmm. I sexually identify as a, a cool attack submarine. Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> you know. But... You have some, like Krav Maga, Mm -hmm. fight to flee. Well, we better hope that this person has the ability to flee. But what I think a lot of self-protection instructors are failing to understand, Lynn, is when you're in an altercation, there's at least two people. Right. Unless you're schizophrenic fighting yourself, Hmm. which is quite possible these days. (laughs) Depends on what meds they're on. Right, exactly. (laughs) So you have a a student or client that you tell... Do what you got to do and run. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. But what happens if this person is not physically capable of doing that? Or if they're in just such poor physical condition, they yeah. make it 100 yards, and they just happen to got into a fight with some guy who runs triathlons. Yeah. yeah it, it, we, we, we had a student one time that had, had a knee problems. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it was a female student had knee problems. And, you know, when it comes to certain leg work and things like that, she had trouble with that. But if she hit you, <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she had hands to be that would that you did not want to deal with. So we, you know, we, we we work with that strong suit. We work with that strength, and you have to teach your students how to work with their weaknesses, work through their weaknesses, work around, find alternate routes. Mm-hmm. You know, and so so absolutely, what you're saying is 100 percent true. You know, you as an instructor, you have to you, know, you you have to instruct. You have to find out. You know, know your students. Know your clients. Know the people you're working with. I didn't mean to hijack what you were no. saying, but that's the first thing she came to my mind. You know, when you first said that. But you know, learn in your body. You, how many times have you heard me preach this? Mm-hmm. You know, learn your own body. Uh, something I've been working on this week because if you look at a lot of the different martial arts, we talk about breathing. Right. Now, my instructor always taught breathing and balance. Mm-hmm. Breathing and balance. If you don't have those two things, you lose every time. There was a, a an old. I'll, I'll give you two examples of things that he, he had us do. One of them we had to do for it to get your black belt. This is it's not impossible, but it's hard. Mm-hmm. Is exhaling through your mouth and simultaneously inhaling through your nose. And everybody's doing it right now. I'm not because I knew you were going to say that. Right. Everybody is. <laughs> well, it's, it's impossible. No, it's not because I've, yeah. I've done it. 
And another thing he would do to learn to get to, to, to get a person where they could control their body was he would just put on a regular work glove, mm-hmm. right hand, left hand, whatever your dominant hand was, and you had to take the glove off, but here are the rules. You couldn't use the other hand. You couldn't use your fingers to manip- you couldn't use your fingers to manipulate the, the ends of the gloves. You had to figure out a way to slide your hand out of this glove mm. from the inside. Okay. <laughs> That's an interesting feat. Yeah, you know, it took about the first time. I, it took me about. I'm not ashamed to admit it. It took me about eight days <laughs> to figure it out. Right. But then, ding! There it was. Yeah. Because I did not know how my own body worked. Right. And I've been at this point. I've been doing this for seven years with him. Now this was in 1999. I'm like, take a glove off. How hard is this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ew! Ew! That's me. Try. Right. <laughs> After several years later, what I've learned is is those things that are difficult for me. What happens when you take a person who is uninitiated on any level of, mm-hmm. of fighting, of self-protection, or being in a stressful situation? We're not talking about combat soldiers here. I'm talking about the lady that works at the bank that you're teaching. That's right. Yeah. Average, everyday yeah. people. You know, I'm not talking about our, our, our guys that are coming back from Iraq or, you know, the, the cop on the beat. We're talking about the woman at the flower shop. Yeah. No, we're talking about the guy that works on your car. Mm-hmm. These are the people that we work with. So you've got to teach them something that's completely foreign to them. But your but your go to and your and your and your be all response is, well, do enough damage to run. Mm-hmm. Well, my first question is, is well, how often do you run? <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm not trying to be a, a smart ass here, yep. but you know, yep. I'll, how often do you run? Well, I don't. Oh boy. You know, that could be a problem. I'll give you an idea. Last night, I ran four miles. Mm-hmm. I did some Mawashigiri practice. That's round kicks for those of you who don't study Japanese karate. And then I'm sitting there at the park, and I'm like, well, there's nobody here. I got to park all to myself. Parking lot's empty. Mm, gassers. Mm, good stuff. Right. And my thighs are feeling it today. Mm. But you know, 2021 is going to be a new year for me. I like it. But people don't do that. But your default risk, that'd be like saying, we know, well, don't run, just throw a, a monster left hook and do it like Mike Tyson. Yeah, the problem is you're not Mike Tyson. You're not Mike Tyson, and, <laughs> well, have you ever learned a left hook? Well, no. Well, we got a problem here. Yeah. So you're asking people to do something that is foreign to them. Right. Versus we need to structure, uh, start structuring our, our classes and what we're teaching people and fit it to them, not them fitting them to a situation. It doesn't work. That's right. Uh, preach. I like it. All right. So let's go to the second part of this. Mm-hmm. So we've got the human aspect of this. Mm-hmm. We're going to go now to the environment. Okay. You've heard this. Now, I'm, I'm going to try not to laugh here. Don't put your back against the wall. Mm. Oh, yeah, we've heard that. Well, why? I, I'm asking you. I'm asking you, mm-hmm. uh, you at home. Why would you not put your back against the wall? And in full disclosure, I do. And because I've been with you so long, I will too. <laughs> but I'll play. I'll play along here. Uh, I mean, a lot of people don't want to be because they don't want to be backed against. They they don't want to be backed into the corner, even though it not necessarily is a corner. It's a wall. Yeah, I didn't say a corner. I, I said I wall. I know. I know. But that's the first thing people. They, they feel like they're, they're backed up. They have nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. They're trapped. They feel trapped. I, 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 my back's against the wall. I've got nowhere to go. Now, Which we know we is wrong, but okay, go ahead. Second question, so you can tell our, our good folks at home that mm-hmm. I'm not totally full of shit. I right. am crazy, but I'm not full of shit. There's a vast difference, folks. Okay. okay. <laughs> How many times have you seen me mm-hmm. in demonstrations, mm-hmm. pretty live demonstrations, by the way. Very live demonstrations. <laughs> uh, how many people have been on me at one time smashing me against the wall? Oh, uh, four, five people. Have I ever escaped Wouldn't, those situations? Every one of them. Well, that's interesting because if you listen to some of these learned people out here talking, that's one place you should never be. Right. So their response is, well, don't be against the wall, but you want a 360-degree field of vision where somebody hits you in the back of the head. That's and right. You. Yeah. That's that's a stroke of genius. Yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I knew he that's was going there. That's a stroke there. of genius. <laughs> you know, and here's this thing. Keep your head on a swivel. Mm. What What the hell does that mean? I mean, what are you? I mean, what are we, bobbleheads? 
Now, I get what it means, always be, be self-aware. And be looking around. Looking around. Yeah. But there's a problem with that. Right. Because if you're all of a sudden, if you're walking around looking like this all the time, and for those of you who are not watching, what I'm doing is, is you know. Like a chicken. Yeah. I look left, like, right, I, left, right, I look left, right, like, left, I look right, like left, right. I look like a rooster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who does that? And if you do, you need to be in a straight jacket. Probably some people on some meds. Right. <laughs> Or probably need to be on some meds. Folks, that's no way to live. <laughs> and I'm not going to teach you to live like that. No. What the, what they're actually saying is be be self-aware. Be aware of your environment. Right. Because I promise you this, you know, despite what they're teaching you in, in the you know the, the weekend spec ops class you 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 took from the, the Navy SEAL at the end of the street, mm -hmm. You go looking around like that, and a seasoned criminal comes up and sees that. If he's stalking you, you're going to catch a 38 behind the ear. <laughs> because if he's going to get you, he's done got you. Because what you've done now is you let him know you're there. Yeah. But the environment, don't put your back against the wall. I look at this kind of like a two, what I call the 270 rule. 270 degrees. Mm -hmm. If you and I are in a restaurant, I want to be able to have a 270 degree field of vision. Right. Because I'm, I mean, honestly. Now I trust you. If now I I'll, don't set your back to the door, there's another one, right? Mm -hmm. right? Well, what happens if you've got no other choice? Right. No, I would much rather sit with my back to the door, and not have my face on a camera. Now, I'll stew on that one a little bit. <laughs> there you go. And there's a reason for that. I'll go ahead. It's 2021. I'm 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 in the giving spirit. You know why I don't want to do that? Because if I have to do something absolutely terrifying to somebody, it'll be on camera. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, despite the fact, unless you've got into a a a a dispute with John Dillinger, Al Capone, or somebody of that nature, and you're sitting down minding your business, having your having your ham and eggs and your coffee at the local at the local greasy spoon yeah why you know again don't sit with your back to the door no that's what if if all things being equal yeah if i have a choice of sit with my back to the door or sit with my back to the camera <laughs> we we know which one you're going with <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> i like it you know we're not doing that the environment know where you're at one of the last places you want to go anymore is malls Oh, yeah. Uh, avoid that like the plague. Large gatherings. And it's not because of COVID. <laughs> yeah. Some of my playing words there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have to understand where we're at. And that just does not involve the place. That involves the people and the activities they're in. Correct. So when we're looking at this and you're explaining these things to people, am I more apt to be to, to tell you know, if, if, if our listeners today are, are our class, are they going to ass uh, assess the environment the same as if they're in a, a large shopping mall, if they're in the Mall of America, versus if they're in church? Mm. Because let's just be honest about this. If you don't want people behind you, well, how are you ever going to sit down in a pew at church? Because I'll be quite honest with you. I, I, number one, I've never been assaulted at church. Right. The people that sat behind me at church, if if we had church anymore, uh, I really don't have that great of a fear of him hitting me by hit me in the back of the head with the offering plate. Right. I don't because I know that environment. Right. If you're in prison, totally different, totally different set of circumstances. Yeah, different environment. There's your head on a swivel, among yeah. other things. Yeah. No, don't. You know, anyway. I'm not doing it. Don't do it. I'm not doing it. So we got our environment. H E Hotel Echo. Let's go to the D. Let's go to the decision making. Ooh, I like this one. So something's happening. You know, there's this actually becomes from a lot of surveillance detection and where I'm taking this of back when I was in in my intel days in the military and some other things I've did in my life of surveillance detection and counter surveillance and those are not the same thing that's and that's another podcast but surveillance to if you want to find somebody in this field that does not know what they're talking about if they say if they're using those two terms interchangeably they're incompetent they don't know what they're talking about because right. they're two totally different concepts but we've come to a decision making we're coming to fight flight or freeze mm -hmm. 
what do I do here? And you do, got a split second to make that decision. And you got a decision. split second yeah. to make his decision. You know, for example, you're sitting in a bar in San Diego, California, minding your business, eating your supper at the bar, and behind you, you hear a, a fight breaking out. And before you can make a decision, you hear a gunshot. Huh. And you get shot in the back. That's kind of a story that hits close to home for me. That, that was my dad. Huh. That actually happened. Now, he had, for the you know, remainder of his life, he had a thirty eight caliber yep. bullet lodged in between the spine and the spinal cord. They could never remove it. It would have paralyzed him. But that was an instance of where you take the situation, the environment, and his inability to make a decision, and it impacted him for the rest of his life. Hmm. But let's just go on out on a limb. Say you do have the uh, that. Do we leave? Do we defend ourselves? Do we shelter in place, or do you know, I'm going to say defend in place? Hmm. If we have to defend in place, what do we do? What do we use for weapons? Because if you in if you go to a place that serves alcohol, guess what you can't carry, and at least in our state. Right. So then what do you do? Use that bottle of alcohol. <laughs> Use a bottle of alcohol. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. No, you, 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 that's where improvised weapons comes in. And right. you better have a be studied up on improvised weapons and so, how to use them. So we're we're now we're we're at a point now of if you've been with us for any amount of time, the freeze, we've got rid of that. Yeah, that's we've got we've got that out of your system. But do we mm -hmm. we're making a decision now. Do we stay or do we go? And there's other other decisions to be made here. Do you have your family with you? Mm -hmm. uh, are you like me a year ago this time where you can't capably do that? Right. You know, if I had been sitting down in, in a place and something like that broke out, I you wasn't robbed, sprinting. I can't. Yeah. You know, I've I've got two pieces of mesh on two different hernias and, and, a, and a, a scar on my leg from a lymph node removal. I couldn't have run if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't have fought if I wanted to. So what would have been the, the appropriate action for me to take? Not be there. Right. Don't put yourself in that position. Don't put yourself in that position. Yeah. You know, another thing is, any, and we have to recognize that this can happen anywhere. Bad things happen to, bad, to good people and in good places. Yeah. But, the, but there's a reason that I, me, and, me and my family, we tend to frequent the same places over and over again for, well, food's great. Mm -hmm. I know the people. They treat us well. But also, there's another reason. I feel safe there. Yeah. You know your environment. Right. <clears throat> I've The places that we go to eat, I've never had an instance where hmm, this is not going to go well over in the corner. Yeah. Because especially the one place we go, I know the owner, and he's not going to tolerate it. Right. And not to mention, you know, when the guy comes up and says, hey, you know, I, I bought 100 cases of 762. <laughs> that ought to be a little key to, you know, that this, you know, yeah, probably don't want to screw with this guy. Right. But knowing those things, you making decisions about what actions do I take? Do I take any actions at all? You know, you're sitting there and all of a sudden something breaks out to your left, you're minding your business, eating your supper, and you just happen to look up and glance and look down, and all of a sudden those two participants in that argument who might be inebriated catch you looking. Oh, yeah. The hell are you looking at? And then it's on with you. Mm -hmm. And you're totally innocent in the situation. Right. How many times? We, we know plenty of people this has happened to. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if you want to have some fun, and this is fantastic. Now, and then you better be prepared to defend yourself if you do this. But this is, you know, if, if you see two people getting in an argument, walk up and try to intervene, but take a side. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're an ass. And then watch what the other guy does. Because he's like, wait a minute here. Who do I fight? Mm. <laughs> it's great, man. Because this guy's like, you know, what, hey, what about me? I'm supposed to be the one kicking his ass, not you. Yeah. Great fun. <laughs> <laughs> take, again, that's not advice. That's just him talking. <laughs> again, if you take advice from me, you deserve what you get. I don't <laughs> Anyway, the advice, the, 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 <laughs> you, you can take advice, but the, just understand this. There's good and bad advice. There's good and bad advice, and there are consequences to your actions. Yes. So, so what might be good for me not, might, might not be good for you. Yeah, I'm, there I'm, you go. I'm just saying. But anyway, <laughs> entertainment purposes only.
So the H E D. Okay, now we're going to go to the actual escape. Ah, gotcha. Okay. We decided to get the hell out of here. Right. If we go back to that massacre that happened down in El Paso, mm-hmm. was it about a year ago? Two ago? Two years ago? And roughly two. Well, that guy walked into the Walmart. It was a Walmart, wasn't it? About a year and a half ago. He walks in ago. with a Wasser 10. Mm-hmm. I own one of those, by the way. Uh, mass chaos. Mm-hmm. How many exits are there in a, in, a, in a typical Walmart? For the general public, three. But in the back, there's multiple right. and docks and that sort of thing. Right. If you know where, where to go to the, get to the back door and go out. Right. Or four because you got the tire center. So there's quite a few. Right. <laughs> but if you look at that carnage, what happened? Everybody went out one way. Exactly. Yeah. It was a herd mentality. Yeah. They all knew just that one front door, and that was it. You know, yeah. having worked, you know, having worked retail before, you can generally count on something on exits at the front and back of the store. Right. Yeah, you know, because you got where the truck comes in. You mm-hmm. know, the the loading docks, right. things like that. Uh, you're going to have fire exits, mm-hmm. and I've actually seen people in cases where you know a smoke alarm or something's going off. Oh, we can't go out that way. I'll set the alarm off. Uh, that's what it's for. <laughs> yeah. You know the fire. You know the fire department's out out in the parking lot, but you don't want to set the alarm off. Yeah. Well, they'll cut it off. Yeah, they'll take care of. It. Yes. It's okay. Right. <laughs> you know restaurants. You got the front door. But there's also sometimes the side doors. Right. And then you got the back doors going in and out of the kitchen. The kitchen. Right. Yeah. So those are things you need to be aware of. Right. So we know where the where is. Now we go to the how. Mm-hmm. I was listening to a, a, a podcast, and it was on YouTube. It was over the Christmas break, and I'm, I meant to talk to you about this, but uh, things got in the way. This guy was supposedly a security contractor, mm-hmm. whatever the hell that is. Uh, contractors contracting contractually. Must be. Yeah, yeah. What are they contracting, though? COVID. Gonorrhea. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. <laughs> He made a comment, and he was actually talking about firearms, but <clears throat> he made a comment to me that I was like, wait a minute, i got to hear this again. Mm-hmm. So I rewound it 10 seconds to listen to him. And he made the comment, he says that men, when they're being taught to defend themselves or fight, must be deprogrammed into rushing forward. Yeah, I, okay, I'll let you stew on that for a second because if y'all can't see the look on his face, this is priceless. It, uh, yeah, what the hell is that all about? <laughs> so what he's saying, in effect, mm-hmm. is two, is mm-hmm. one of, okay, let's just look at what he's saying tactically or in terms of technique. Okay. Now, the majority of what I teach in unarmed, the if I see a kick, if I see a punch, whatever, what am I instinctually going to do to you? Attack me. I'm going to be, I, I'm going to smother it. You're going to be in my grill and around it. I'm going to be, in, I'm going to be all over you. I'm yeah. going to, it's actually what I, I've said this to you for 10 years. I smother that tactic. Exactly. It's like putting out a fire. Right. You throw the blanket on it, but if I step back and start doing like this and start fanning it, what happens? It grows. It gets worse. Yeah. Exactly. Long story short on this guy, you're a jackass. Yeah. You're going to get somebody killed. Yeah. But he's a professional. No, he's a professional. Air quotes. With with <laughs> about half a million subscribers. And that's what makes that so dangerous is because people are automatically going to assume that, because well, he look, he's got all these followers. He must know what he's talking about. Mm. Uh, newsflash, you don't. We know that's not the case. We know. <laughs> okay, I won't right. go down that road. But, yeah. You have to make a decision in these areas. And... And here's the thing that we have a hard time talking to people about. And and you've heard me say this 100,000 times to people. I'm not going to be there with you. That's right. When this happens. You might know, be there in spirit, on the shoulder. I might be, I might be that little, you know, <laughs> if, if, if I'm on the left shoulder, don't listen to it. <laughs> that's the bad me. <laughs> that's that's the bad advice that was coming out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, if it's gunfire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might want to go the other way. Right. If it's some guy coming at you, you know, and, and you've got ample training, like my guys, 
I would counsel you to take different measures. Right. But you're going to have to make a decision on how we get out of here based on what the threat is posed against you, what the available areas of or avenues of egress are, not ingress, but egress. Mm -hmm. Because in a lot of these places, the ingress means way you go in, egress way you go out, for those of you who don't know that. Most people, it's one and the same. But this is where you have to step out of what you know is normal and what you know is right and what you know is, and I'm going to say something here that a lot of people ain't going to like, of what the rules are. In a violent situation, there are no rules. Right. I was watching this thing today on YouTube. Now, I'm not going out this guy because I love his I love his work. But he was actually talking about unarmed tactics. Mm -hmm. Now he's a nasty individual. Right. But then he says you're going to have to legally explain this. So you know where I'm going with this. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't give the first damn if there's a do not enter sign above your kitchen door, if that's the only way out for me to get out of this and get out of there with without being shot, stabbed. Or get my ass kicked. Right. Especially if I have my family with me. Right. You're just going to have to get over it. Yeah. You know, do not enter employees only. Piss off. Tough. <laughs> you, you should be able to handle your business out here a little bit better. Right. I won't have to, I won't have to bum rush exactly. your kitchen. You know, yeah. but this business of, of you're putting people in a box because of rules and laws. Mm -hmm. When somebody's doing something to you that is neither obeying or observing said rules or laws. Well, what are you doing to this person? Right. You're, you know, I, I'd rather be tried by 12 and carried by 6. Bullshit. I've said this before, and that's another podcast. I'll do it again if you want to hear it. But what you're doing in that situation is now what you're, you're, you're putting that person in fear of being tried by 12. So what you're doing is reverting them to be carried by 6. Exactly. You, 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 they've already have fear. Now you're, you're, you're putting hesitation in their mind. No, there's one rule about this, about fighting. Mm -hmm. Remember this. If both sides ain't following the rules, there are no rules. That's right. You know, if you're fighting Queensberry and I'm standing in front of you with a hatchet, well, I'm sorry, but if you sit there and fight Queen, you're, you're a dumbass. <laughs> you're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> That's right. You, you know, if I have to shoot you, you know, you have to be prepared to, like Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. That mentality almost got that boy killed. Yeah. Because in his mind, he did the right thing. Right. You know, he stood around waiting for the cops. And what happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How'd that work out for him? Yeah. And then he still got arrested. Yeah. So how do you escape this? And then we get the last part of this. The D is when we start doing damage or accepting damage or or, or resistance. Uh. Damage, resistance, because I told you I'm still working on this. Gotcha. Do we resist or do we not? Hmm. Now, when I say resist, what I'm is because you brought this to me. I didn't bring this to you. Right. Now, eventually, within a few seconds, you're going to be the one resisting. Correct. Yeah. You know, if we're in a restaurant and you take a a, a pretty sizable soup bowl into the to the face. Hmm. I love that glass plate. Right, yeah. yeah, especially those ones they have in the Mexican restaurants. <laughs> oh, yeah. Holy shit, could you oh, imagine that? I always eat fajitas, man, so I got, I got the handle and yeah, everything. Could you imagine that in the, for, in the forehead? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so the resistance, the damage, so H-E-D-E-R. I'd actually started to go with this last, like, I was playing with them, like H-E-D-E-D, -E -E headed, that sounds stupid. But, uh. <laughs> but, I'll take it. Nah, I won't. I don't okay. know. Headed, that uh, sounds like some. Heater, I like yeah, heater. Heater, headed, something like that. Headed, that sounds like some kind of a... John Heater? That's yeah. the guy played Napoleon Dynamite? That sounds like some kind of a freaking snuff film in Egypt or something. <laughs> Headed. But, uh, God, I'm losing it. We have to... What do you do? How far do you go with this? Yeah. I can't answer that for you. It's all going to be dependent on that situation. Exactly. But, you, but, but that's where training... Training not only your body, but training your mind. Training how to deal with, how to deal with stress, how, how how to operate in a stressful situation. That's where all that you comes know, into into play. But a lot of that, Glenn, I'm going to say every bit of this comes to mindset, right? And it comes into your heart. True. But we've been so conditioned as a society, and I can't speak for our listeners over in over in Europe or you know in places like that because I can't imagine it's any different. But we're so used to trusting that law enforcement is going to do the right thing while I'm defending myself. Hmm. Uh, 
And these are the same people that get very upset if you second guess them. I mean, we call it Monday morning quarterbacking. Right. And then the whole time, that's what they're doing to you. Right. Well, they're the law enforcement officer. You're not. Well, I'm tell you, y'all do what you want to do, but I'm going to tell you how I deal with that. I ain't going to be there. Right. Because if you go back to the to the Rittenhouse situation, the first time, that first guy that he smoke checked, I believe, he shot in the head. Mm-hmm. If he had probably made some decisions, the second part of that might not would have happened. But he's a kid. Yeah. You know, you look at a vast majority of these situations that have occurred, they they do what they think is right. Yeah. And, the, and I'm not I'm not throwing shade on these people. I'm not second guessing them. But when you know, when the mob decides to chase somebody down and somebody pops off around and you're chasing a guy that's already armed, don't be surprised what may happen. Right. Exactly. You know, I just, it, uh, it's not rocket science. I mean, you take what happened today. <clears throat> mm-hmm. A year or so ago, I taught a class on, for lack of better words, mob violence. How do you get in and out of this? Mm-hmm. And everybody looked at me like I was crazy. When am I ever going to use this? watch tv much yeah i'm not a prophet I, i'm not a i'm not a i'm not a fortune teller and i'm not a soothsayer i'm not a voodoo man but i've been saying i mean and you've been with me uh, i've been 12, saying uh, 13 this, years i've been saying this and mm-hmm. everybody thought i was crazy well we're here now yeah and you don't really want to know where i think we're going to be in six months now from now yeah but those things you're going to have to uh, you know Humanity, your human behavior, your environment, your decision making, the escape, yeah. the decision to resist, what we've just talked about over the last few minutes, it's got skill to it. But you could take a person who's not ever taken the first martial arts class in their life. Right. And you can apply these tactics and you can apply these mindsets and they can get out of this with some with some just some basic education. Yep. But you're gonna have to let go of a lot of the things that we've known as normal over the past few years. We were talking about this today. You know, our society, if, if it, what's left of it, mm-hmm. if you're looking a year from now, but you're still living by the norms and values you had in 2010 or 2002, you know, most of the time, if you're in the middle of the road, you know what sits there? They're called flat squirrels. Yep. You're going to have to change your mode of thinking, folks. Yeah, because other people are doing it, are, are going to do it for you. Well, but they but they've been they yeah. they are, they're already there, and right. and you're exactly right. You know, but these things, you know, and this is I'm just scratching the surface on this. Oh yeah, we could, we could go down a, a many many hour rabbit hole with that. You know, when I get into TED T E D D, we'll do we might do that one next week. Uh, I like it. We'll do a TED talk T E D D. You know, <laughs> for example, you know the head on the head on a swivel Mm -hmm. is that always a a good thing to let somebody know well for example let's go to what i talk to women about that are being possibly followed in a mall Mm -hmm. i was listening to this guy and god bless him he probably means well hold up your phone and act like you're taking a selfie or, or trying to get signal because that's, you know, I, I do that all the time. I can't get signal, so I'll try to hold it up to the ceiling tiles. Yeah, because three feet will make, make a difference. Yeah, they, you know, <laughs> that's going to get it that much closer to the satellite, right? Yeah, that satellite's, yeah. yeah. Okay. 200 miles away. You know, and this guy's a dumb criminal. <laughs> yeah. Like he's never done this before. Right, right. What you've done is you've got that woman killed. Yeah. Sometimes the worst thing you can do to somebody who is trying to harm you is let on that you know what they're doing. Yeah. I know your game. Because then yeah. you force them to have to make a decision, and it's probably going to be one that's not in your best interest. And that's where a lot of the, the stuff that we see in our industry, in our profession, mm-hmm. from the police and the military, we already know y'all are fighting the bad guys. Right. But there's a difference here, guys, is because you've got a level of authority, or you think you do, Mm-hmm. And you've got certain protections protections and leeways Mm -hmm. that Joe Schmo out here does not have. That's correct. But then you're going to sit here and and expect him to do the same things that you do and have your mentality. But 
you're 10 miles down the road from him. What are you going to do for this person? Write a report. Right. And yeah. then bring the five-gallon bucket and the squeegee to clean up his brains. Right. That's not doing that person any good. That's right. I, uh, you hit the nail on the head with that one. You know, you, you know, you you can't expect this person to operate like a green beret or a Navy SEAL because you you've been doing this for ten years in hostile environments. You can probably give them some of the same knowledge and and and, and give them a few pointers. Right. But it's not the same as dealing with a criminal out here like we've been doing all these years. Right. It just doesn't translate. And then you've got got the police where they come into the security field. It's not an inverse relationship where you can, okay, I've called them for 10 years, and now I know how to prevent it. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's examine this, and I've, I've asked this before. How many crimes did you prevent? And when you say that, they'll look at you like you've got ice cream shooting out of your nose. <laughs> well, what do you mean? How many crimes can you sh can you show factually on paper that you prevented while they were in progress? And you're gonna get a very uncomfortable answer because if they're honest about it, there's no way of knowing. Right, because they weren't there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, people get away with a lot more than they get caught for. Right. Yeah. So if they're halfway honest about this, they're gonna to have to look at you and say, "Well, I have no way of knowing, and I can't answer that." Right. Well, what good are you to this person? Yeah. If you really want to hire a great security consultant or somebody like that, the first person you want to do is go talk to some guy that just got out of prison for doing what you're trying to stop. Yeah. That's just like you know, these, these, these companies and the government who they go out and they hire these hackers. Kevin Mitnick. Hire the guys that, that know how to be the, do the crime. Right. You yes. know, and I'm not, I'm not defending these people. I'm right. not. But there, it, you have to come to a point where the things that we may be teaching people mm – -hmm. It's. We say we as an industry, not we as we, a me and you. Not, not me and you. Yeah, you're exactly. You know, I thank you for preparing that. that. <laughs> but you know, it's like you go to a doctor. I'm gonna go hire a nutritionist, and this person's 300 pounds and obese and is a chain smoker. Who would do that? Yeah. I mean, honestly, any of you out there listening to us, if you went, to the, I, mean, I want to, I want to change. Well, my I'm life. not gonna say the name of it. But there's this show. I, I come in. My, my wife was watching one night, and there's this girl, and she's teaching aerobics class, and she's about 400 pounds. Yeah, I know she lives here. Yeah, yeah, she's she's a local celebrity, mm -hmm. and you know, bless her heart, great for trying. But as a person wanting to go out and pay to, get, I, I, that's just not. I don't get it exactly. If I want to, if I want to, if I want to bulk up, if I want to, you know, get your guns, and I want to go out and hire a trainer, I'm gonna hire some big dude. I want to go <laughs> hire some guy who you know, like at the gym, you know, yeah. those some of them guys down there. Hey, I, I want those. Can you help me? Yeah. I'm not going to hire some guy that looks like, you know, he's been on a crack binge for six yeah, weeks. Exactly. That's, that, that, exactly. It's just not going to happen. Yep. You know, so, you know, the human, human, human part of this, you know, the environment, you know, the decision making, the escape, you know, the practice and, 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 and the decision. Yeah. And the resistance, H-E-D-E-R, header, heater, however you want to. You, Still working on it. Work in progress. Working on this. The big part of this is is training your mind. Yeah. You don't have to be a, a black belt. You don't have to be a combat veteran. You can be everyday Joe citizen. Yeah. But you're going to have to start looking at the world differently. And you've got to start that process, that training process in some manner, shape, or form. You've got to you've got to make a conscious effort. It's like this one. Yeah. You know, the hold of the gun and, and, and you've seen this a hundred thousand times. They deflect the gun to the right. Oh God. Well, my question then and you remember this, but oh, yeah. I got in a lot of trouble for this. Is if I push that firearm to the right, mm -hmm. you know, with like a parrying action, what happens if my wife is on my right? Mm -hmm. she get a, she's going to get a new uh, orifice. Yeah, I just shot my wife in the head. Yeah. Well, we didn't think about that. Or if you're in a food court at a mall mm. and the guy pulls a trigger and, and there's 100 people behind me. Uh, somebody's grandma's back there. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that all plays into this environment. Exactly. That all plays into this decision making. It all plays into the resistance. Yeah. You know. You know, I, I don't know how to do a. You know, in gymnastics and the bars that they do, I don't know how to do that. So, guess what? I don't attempt that. 
exactly. <laughs> so if you don't know what you're doing, it's probably best not to attempt it. You know, especially in a life or death situation. Or, you know, you go find somebody that knows how to do it, and you take it step by step and learn. You know, it'd be just like you and I if we get a you know, back in a few years ago, I want to do MMA. Oh yeah. Well, sir, I don't teach MMA. Yeah. You know, I, I've never fought in a cage. I, I fought in in the full contact karate arena. Mm-hmm. I fought in judo. But I can't teach you with any credibility the nuances of getting in a cage, and how to operate in that area. I can teach under their you, rules. Under their rules. Right. That's not what I do. Right. Well, that's well. We just want to fight, and then we found out a lot of them okay, really didn't. Well, fine. Yeah, well, then <laughs> didn't really sure. want to fight. Fantastic. Welcome home. I didn't really. Pain was involved. Well, that's part of fighting. Yes. I'm sorry. You know, first you're, not, rule, you're not always going to be the winner. Yeah. First rule of every fight is both of you is going to get hurt. That's right. That's exactly. That's exactly right. Nobody walks away unscathed. Right. You know. But in 2021. I'm, I'm taking a new focus on, on a lot of it, well, what I'm looking at. But, but in this, I think what we need to probably say, you know, going out the gate here, is you need to think differently. Yeah. You know, and, and, and pay attention to what's going on around us. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is turn on the television. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it's amazing how people can see the same thing and see it differently. Oh, that, that's huge. That's huge. You know, you think about this. You go to, uh, I'm going to say that, I, I'm actually probably taking my voter, my name off the voter rolls mm-hmm. for two reasons. Number one, I'm sick of this shit. Yeah. But number two, that would get me out of jury duty. Ah. Ding, ding. Free tip. <laughs> now, that is advice. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> That's really good advice. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, you go in and look at how on juries – how the prosecution and the defense can present both sides of their evidence. They're looking at the same thing. Right. You know, how you look at evidence or, or, or facts. And the rule of one in, in, in a criminal investigation, I'm, I'm on, there's going to be some cops out here if they're listening to us that are going to probably, they're, they're about to bust a vein in their forehead. There's no such thing as facts. There's observations. Hmm. Because of the way people interpret things Absolutely. Differently. Absolutely. And then you present that to the prosecutor who is going to look at the law and say, hmm, do these observations, do these air quote, air fingers quote facts that this officer has gathered, do they match with the elements of this offense? If so, ding, we're going with this. Hmm. But then you've got the other side like, whoa, whoa, hold the phone. We can explain this. And that's what the defense is. That's basically what we have a valid explanation for why this did or did not happen. Hmm. You want to watch, and I've never found one. I was speaking with a, a friend of mine who is a PI from another state recently, mm-hmm. and he about lost his mind with me. I said, you want to derail a criminal invest- investigation real quick? Is do a background investigation on the police officer. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> dig up dirt yeah oh yeah you know i i get all this you know this is a pretty airtight case but uh could you explain to me why you was doinking miss sally over behind behind the dollar general the other night on, on the hood of your patrol car it'd be a shame your wife got a hold of this that sounds like you're very ethical right and you're trying to put my 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 client in prison for 20 years yeah mm, yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> can you say plea bargain <laughs> You tell he's had a little time in the in the, the justice system he working working some angles. <laughs> I actually true story. I knew a guy one time that got caught having sex in the back of a patrol car. He just forgot one thing. That in the back of those cars, when you got that cage, that wasn't the problem. Right. The problem was the locks. Oh, couldn't get out. He couldn't get out. So he's naked in the in the back of this car with his woman. Uh, That's not his wife. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> didn't go well. We can get off of this uh, podcast. I gotta find out who this was because <laughs> I probably know him. <laughs> you do, but uh, <laughs> but you want to derail? That's what I'm talking about. Changing your mind of thinking. Right. right. Gotcha. Is I'm not gonna fight you under your rules. Masashi. Hmm. Right. Yep. You know you, you should investigate this further. But if you're sitting here 
in any situation, well, like today in this capital business, mm-hmm. storming the capital, we made a statement, but there's a slight problem here. How are you going to get out? Yeah. Mm. Once you're in, you're in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that, this is going to be a little. Capital name. police have kind of covered all the exits. Yeah. Now. They now. Yeah. They're they're they've got. Yeah. Come out. We've got you surrounded. Right? Unless you know the little tunnels that they use for to get everybody else in. Well, that that probably that really won't end well. <laughs> but uh, but again, uh, yeah. knowing your environment, right? Making these decisions, and how am I going to get out of this? Yeah. Because that is something that I preached all my people is all way. I don't care what it is. Yeah. You better before you get in it, make sure you got a way out of it. Uh, I love it. Preach it. I've heard this for years. I, I, I'm, you know, it's just I know what's I'm getting. Ready. I know what's coming out of his mouth because I, it, it, and he's absolutely 100 percent correct. 100 percent correct. You know, before you open your mouth to that person, you know, I, understand the consequence I, of that action. I, I just, you know, I've got a headache. You know, I, I, I don't know who's outside. Yeah. Just, just let it go. Yep. Leave yourself a way out. Loving the way we're kicking off 2021. Let's do it. I like it. That was good stuff. Um, please, you guys, man. It, 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 well, again, we're going to nail this, nail this, nail this, nail this, nail this. I'm going to say it more than I did last year. Think about everything that is said today. Think about everything that we talk about. Listen to this. Think about it and listen to it again. And please comment, email us, You know, share your thoughts with us. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. You know, We're here to try to help. Um. But, you know, this is the path for 2021. We, we really want to go deep down these paths. You know, um, like what you shared today was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, I think I, I'm not, I'm not it, done with it. It was a very, very good, very good lesson. You know, you know, and, and I like it. And I, I hope all you guys out there got something out of it and you at least, at least let us know your thoughts on it. That would be awesome. And one of the things for 2021, I was going to try to – just, we try to keep it under an hour, but we didn't make it. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, or, or over an hour. <laughs> but that's the thing is, when he, he and I get sound, I get to talking. Time all of a sudden goes away. It just we you know we get involved in the conversation, and it's like it's not just on the podcast. When we get to talk, we go out to eat somewhere. Well, we might be sitting there for two hours, and don't realize it. Let's get one of those little kitchen timers right there. <laughs> we might do that. Yeah, get some road flares up. Look like dynamite yeah. on the table. You know, I can look up at the camera. I, I got a timer on the camera, but uh, you imagine what they do to us on YouTube? It'd look like there's a big bomb on the table. It'd <laughs> oh, be fantastic. Oh, we get visits. <laughs> <laughs> they sh- they show up at the studio. Yeah, the not so secret service will be here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, with you guys, please, uh, you know, please hit that like, subscribe, notification isn't bell. Secret service, isn't that prostitution? Semi secret yeah, service. Yeah, Semi secret service. Yeah, because <laughs> I got to advertise. I got secret service. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go down that path. But, I think we uh, just did. <laughs> no, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, again, till next time, you guys think about this stuff. Uh, make sure you check out the things around you, and we'll talk to you next time. We'll see you all later.